for enterprises in Russia were attacked by drones of Ukraine. These are, Lushkovsky and Yefremovsky distilleries in the Tula region, Biochem plant, complex processing of sugar-containing raw materials into different types of alcohol, Russian distilleries produce, in particular, explosives and fuel for military needs. Russian authorities have reported that UAV struck premises belonging to the Russian company Biochem in Russia's Tombov Oblast and an industrial facility in Voronezh Oblast on the night of 21-22 October, and an airport in the city of Nizhny Novgorod, Nizhny Novgorod Oblast, has been closed. An explosion occurred at the premises of JSC Biochem in the town of Raskazovo, presumably after a drone strike. It caused a fire to break out, Maxim Yegorov, the governor of Tombov Oblast said. Yegorov stressed that there were no casualties, the fire was extinguished in an hour, and all the necessary services were on duty. Guzov also claimed that there had been a drone attack on Voronezh Oblast. Air defense and electronic warfare assets and personnel on duty detected and suppressed a UAV in one of the districts of Voronezh Oblast. It fell on the building of a machine hall of an industrial facility, Alexander Guzov, the governor of Voronezh Oblast said. Guzov also stated that there were no casualties, but there was a small fire on one floor of the building. As of 7 o'clock, fire crews are working at the scene. Guzov added that the risk of a drone attack in the region remains. TASS, citing the Federal Air Transport Agency of Russia, reported that the Nizhny Novgorod airport had been temporarily closed, presumably due to the threat of a Ukrainian drone attack. A little earlier, Russian telegram channels reported that the airport had introduced the Kovir plan, meaning that it was closed and planes were being diverted to other airports. Biochem's website shows that the company produces various types of alcohol, fusel oil, liquid carbon dioxide and barda molasses organic fertilizer. Estonia is preparing to meet the Russian army on the approach without waiting for it to reach the borders of the Republic. For this, the Ministry of Defense of the Republic plans to purchase long-range missiles and drones, said the head of the Estonian State Defense Investment Center, Magnus Waldmar Saar, in an interview with Defense One. Estonia has carefully studied the experience of the Ukrainian conflict and come to the conclusion that the enemy should be met not at the border but before it, by striking with missiles and kamikaze drones, including FPV drones. In addition, the Estonian army must hold out until NATO troops arrive, i.e. act faster than the alliance's troops. This also involves purchasing weapons, including air defense systems, including manpads. We cannot continue to fight at close range with anti-tank weapons. We must go deeper to disable enemy forces before they reach the front lines. As part of our next project, Defense 2035, we will conduct exercises to look at weapons with longer range than Iris T. Saar said. As previously reported, Estonia purchased HIMARS, MLRS, with ATA CMS missiles from the US, capable of striking Russian territory. Now, Tallinn intends to increase the purchase of these missiles and has already requested three times more ATA CMS from the US than previously ordered, as well as an increase in the supply of GMLRS missiles. Estonia is seriously preparing for war with Russia. Many Estonians fear their eastern neighbor, Russia. A recent poll commissioned by the Estonian Defense Ministry found that nearly 40% of the country's residents believe a large-scale Russian military invasion of Estonia is likely up 10 percentage points from last year. However, according to the same survey, 60% of respondents are ready to defend their homeland. Estonia, with a population of 1.3 million, has only 6,500 professional soldiers, so it relies heavily on reservists and volunteers, such as members of the Estonian Defense League. The Estonian Rescue Board, the state agency responsible for civil defense, and the Estonian Defense League, a volunteer paramilitary force, were preparing for the largest exercise of its kind to date. It's not hard to see why Tallinn has increased the number of such events. It's no secret where we live. We are not alone in the Baltic region, says Lieutenant Colonel Raoul Kut, commander of the southern unit of the Kaitselit. The same applies to Latvia and Lithuania, and we don't know how the Ukrainian conflict will end. Could it spread further? 
To be prepared for the worst case scenario, we still have time to conduct such exercises. Two Russian regions in the North Caucasus are on the brink of civil war, writes The Spiegel. The ruler of Chechnya, Ramzan Kadyrov, threatened billionaire Suleiman Kerimov, a senator from Dagestan, with blood feud. This is a continuation of the largest business conflict in modern Russia related to the Wildberries company. The divorce of the Bakalchuk spouses led to the fact that each of the founders of the company, both husband and wife, attracted influential patrons to their side. Tatiana Bakalchuk used the Dagestani billionaire and senator Suleiman Kerimov as a roof and her husband, Vladislav Bakalchuk, appealed to the ruler of Chechnya, Kadyrov. From that moment on, Kadyrov and Kerimov began their enmity. At first, there was a firefight between representatives of two Caucasian clans near the office of the Wildberries, right at the walls of the Kremlin. There were no injuries. Then the Chechen leader said that the Dagestani billionaire allegedly ordered his murder and in turn threatened him with blood feud. It is said that since then, Suleiman Kerimov has limited the radius of his movement and doubled the staff of his security. Modern Russian legislation prohibits blood feud. However, this traditional institution is still important in the Caucasus, and it is still not clear whether Chechnya and Dagestan really belong to Russia, the article noted. Despite the common history, very similar languages and cultures, Chechnya and Dagestan today are arranged in an almost opposite way. Chechnya is de facto a separate state that is practically not controlled by Moscow and its leader Ramzan Kadyrov can do whatever he pleases. Dagestan, in fact, is under the control of the federal center. The republic is mainly controlled by the FSB and Regadi and not by the head of the republic, Sergei Melikov. Melikov is 100% a person of Moscow and not a representative of local groups. However, during the conflict between Kerimov and Kadyrov, he already expressed his support for Kerimov and said that Dagestan would support its fellow billionaire in everything. Putin obviously deliberately sets the Chechens and Dagestanis against each other while supporting both and not allowing either side to lose the newspaper rights. This is a dangerous tactic for a region that is becoming increasingly militarized with more money and more weapons. It can neutralize both sides for several years, but then there is a danger that the endless Caucasian war will continue in full force.